We've taken huge steps forward as a society, but there are still many damaging misconceptions about ADHD, which have created a real stigma surrounding the condition. High profile people are using their platforms to change these misconceptions in the hope that others might identify with their stories. One such celebrity is a retired professional footballer, Jermaine Pennant. I met with Jermaine to discuss his past and understand the impact that ADHD has had on his life. Being diagnosed with ADHD, I understand why I was impulsive. I understand why I wanted to be reckless. It makes perfect sense because with ADHD, you have no care for consequence. You take risks, you're very impulsive. So it kind of made, made a lot of sense why I was how I was. You talk about lack of regard for consequences uh, in terms of some of your behavior. T talk me through some of the most challenging times you had and how that played out for you. I think my biggest regret was drink driving. Um, and that ultimately led for me to go into prison. How did that impact on the relationships with the people around you? It was difficult, um, damaging, especially with my partners. I would just ignore what they're saying because it's not what I wanted to hear at that time. So in my friendships, it, it, it kind of broke. In relationships, it, it broke. What suddenly made you sit back and go, do you know what, I might be a bit different and I should go and talk to somebody? I just thought that I'm just that person who's just always messing up, always making the wrong decisions. I thought that's just, I've got to live with it. I was blaming my, my childhood. My mother, she left or abandoned me with my father when I was about three. By the time I was probably about 14, I probably had about four or five different stepmoms. There's never any stability around my life, never any structure. Yeah, that's had a massive impact on my life in relationships and, and certain aspects, but there was more to it in my decision making. And then it was my partner. She said, this is not normal. You need to go and speak to someone or we can't continue. And that kind of hit home, because I thought, I don't want to lose you, so... What prompted her to say that? It was just my behaviour. She, she, she lost her father, and rather than me being there for her, I showed no empathy. So I spoke to someone, told him from the start to where I am now, and he said straight away, ADHD. And then I went to get a second appointment from my doctor. And he said, yeah, ADHD. And then that instant, it was like a, ah, it kind of makes sense. All these little things started making sense. Why am I impulsive? Before making a decision, I now go, look, who's this going to hurt? What impact is it going to have on your career? And what damage is it going to do? If I put out a tweet now, I ask my missus, my missus can I say this? <laughs> you might go, mm, no. Way before, be like, oh yeah, have that, bosh, bang, get out of there. So there's, there's little things now. I just take a step back and think, is this good, is this right? Do you think Sati understands and accepts people uh, who are neurodiverse, people with ADHD? When they don't know, like for instance, me, me, a lot of people would write me off. But I think if they understood that I had ADHD, they would have looked at me in a different light. They would have looked at me in a different way. They would have managed me in a different way. I might go off topic here, but Steve Bruce was the one manager that got the best out of me because no matter what mistakes I would do, he wouldn't punish me. And do you think that concept of punishment, but the idea that you're not conforming, you're not fitting and you shouldn't behave like that, means I'm going to punish you, yeah. it is a real struggle for people with yeah. ADHD who just think a that's, bit differently. Yeah, that's, I think that's the worst thing you can do, punishing that person you will get the wrong reaction rather than understanding why you made that decision. If you manage it in the right way and nurture it, then you can use it as a super brain and you know, hopefully be successful. And to what extent was ADHD responsible for you being a really successful footballer? It helps you zone in, super focus on something, which mine was football. So I'm glad that the message can get out there and people can see that it can, be, it can be managed and once you do and, and you are aware of it, your life will be so much easier. Jermaine's story is extreme, but the pattern is common. Hundreds of thousands of people with ADHD 
will be able to associate with decisions that damage relationships and negatively impact self-esteem. It's estimated that over 2.5 million adults in Britain suffer from ADHD symptoms, but only 120,000 of them have had a formal diagnosis. And that's down to a combination of poor understanding, stigma, and delays in being assessed or receiving treatment. So why are so many people left in limbo, with enough knowledge to know that they're struggling, but without the support or a diagnosis? To learn more about the process, Jermaine put me in touch with Sean McNicholas, the therapist who prompted him to seek further support for ADHD. Thank you much for your time. So I spoke to Jermaine. Uh, yes. I've been speaking to him about his own personal journey with ADHD. And I could start just with just the problems people have around uh, a diagnosis of ADHD. My son, who's 16, also has ADHD. The teachers said to us, we think he has ADHD. He needs to be diagnosed because of the way he behaves in school. It's very disruptive, very uh, hyperactive and, and so on. So a lot of times he was removed from classroom. It was only when he was diagnosed and we had the letter would they then take action, right. which was really upsetting as a parent. The teachers know why he's behaving that way. Yeah. But they're taking no action. They're not putting the measures in place to, to manage this type of child. Presumably, uh, even if uh, teachers suspect or almost know that the child has ADHD from all their experience of teaching, without a formal diagnosis, that child isn't allowed the special treatment and therefore it, you're not going to get the best out of them. Is that true? They're ignored. They're the lost children. I'll just explain the adult process. When you go to see the GP about the diagnosis for ADHD, the GP will refer you to a department for a triage even before you go through to the ADHD diagnosis. So that all takes years. Now, if I want to be diagnosed today privately, I can contact an ADHD clinic, yeah. anyone in the UK, and I will be offered a diagnosis within a month for 500 pounds. So there's this big break between normal society and people struggling and taking years and years and years, especially the most formative years when they're at, uh, when they're at school, going down the, uh, the NHS route or doing it quite quite quickly but obviously quite expensively but until you get that diagnosis nothing can happen yeah. and that's and that's the challenge so w once that diagnosis has come how's the condition normally treated so you have an option uh to be medicated there's different variables of the type of medication they, they prescribe to you if you choose to go down that route the other option is to work on something called um the one plan now the one plan is these are measures taken uh, in accordance with support from the school so you work with the, the head of SEN and that's special educational needs yep. and disabilities. And uh, they will put a plan in place to highlight all of um, your child's uh, challenges. They offer you workshops as well for parents, but the workshops should be more for children rather than parents because um, it's the children that need to understand how to start managing this super brain. Just talk me through how you see the super brain element of it. I say it's like um, most minds work as, as in you drive, uh, you go into a Toyota Prius, you put it in drive, you just drive straight down the road. When you have the ADHD super brain, it's like getting in a Ferrari for the first time. You don't know how the controls work. You're not aware of the acceleration, the speed, the power, the steering. But once you learn to manage and operate it, it's a super skill to, to have. So listening to that, part of it is understanding why you are the way you are and how you behave. And some of that is down to neurodiversity and a lot of it in this case. And then harnessing the positives that come out of having ADHD. There's a reason why Steve Jobs was the way he was. The reason why he thought outside the box all the time. Yeah. Well, that was that was that poor motto, actually. Think different. So oh, he clearly exactly it. because he did. Sean, thank you very much. Very helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. What's evident from my discussion with Sean is that these incredible waiting times are holding children back in the classroom, or adults are forced to suffer in silence and pay hefty fees for a fast track service. So what's being done about it? Unfortunately, the answer is not much. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence is the organisation that provides guidelines for assessing ADHD. And although they acknowledge that some people are experiencing long waiting times for an assessment, they still have no plans to review how they're managed by the NHS. They say that it's for the clinical commissioning groups to provide these services based on the needs of their local population. This means that wait times can vary massively for those seeking a referral from their local GP, putting more responsibility on private organisations to provide much needed support. Our Ventures team at Octopus have introduced me to one such company, Inflow. So I'm on my way to speak with the founders to find out more about how their services are helping to support the ADHD community. 
Hi guys. Hey. Hi. Seth, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Seth. I'm Simon. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey, Levi. Nice Hi, Levi. You Simon. You very good. Oh, so, Seb, Levi, thank you very much for hosting. What, why is ADHD treatment broken today? So, I think in our eyes, ADHD treatment is currently very broken because of the affordability and accessibility issues that exist. So, the gold standard of treatment is going to be somewhat of a mixture of medication management and cognitive behavioral therapy or behavior change therapy coaching. But currently, because there's just not enough people who specialize in that, the healthcare system is under so much pressure. As people come in, most people are just given a one size fits all treatment. I think, you know, we estimate ADHD impacts, you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people around the world. And so, you know, we want to be having an impact in a serious extent and, and being able to help as many of those people as we possibly can. What role is Inflow going to play? How are they going to help? For us, we have a significant portion of our members who are diagnosed and also a significant portion of our members that aren't diagnosed. So one, we're going to focus on like learning and psychoeducation to help you better understand how your ADHD manifests in your life and what it means to live with ADHD. Then we're going to focus on habit development, so the skills and strategies and structure to more effectively manage your ADHD. And this is all done through an app? Yeah, and this is all yeah. done through, through a mobile app. Yeah, wow. We also provide a free access program. Um, so you can reach out to our team and we'll provide details on how to apply for that. Hopefully in five years time, you know, we're going to have really been able to reimagine how care can be delivered for people. And I think providing a new type of care that's not only much more affordable and much more accessible, but also 10 times better than anything that exists today. All the people I've spoken to about ADHD, mm -hmm. they, they seem to tell me two things which seem uh, to totally contradict one another. People who have ADHD will often find it difficult to concentrate. Uh, and then I'll speak to some experts in the field and I'll say actually one of the benefits of having ADHD is this kind of super brain and the ability to concentrate for very long time periods on certain things. How, how do you explain that? The key distinction between someone who has ADHD and someone who doesn't is where people with ADHD are, can be super creative, um, they can hyper focus for really long periods of time, they can spot um, solutions to problems that maybe other people didn't see, they can um, switch between tasks very quickly. When it comes to things that they really need to do like their bills or, um, or something less interesting, they, they can just really struggle and fall away. ADHD comes with, um, and other neurological differences can come with a whole uh, range of, of things that are, are big benefits. But you know, at the same time, there, there are serious struggles that need to be better managed so that you can sort of unlock those benefits. In your experience, how do we change the way that ADHD is perceived in society from the current negative connotations to the positives? I think it's step one starts with awareness. It's people are speaking about their stories openly and transparently and really sharing about what ADHD means. But at the same time, we need to do it in a way that's like centered in science um, and, and, and back to high fact. As we increase this awareness and start speaking about ADHD more openly, I think it will um, go a long way to remove a lot of the stigma and misunderstanding that exists today. Neurodiverse people don't need to be cured. They simply need to understand themselves and be understood by others. Inflow is working hard to make that possible while shifting the narrative around ADHD in society. Thousands of people worldwide are thriving in their online community. And Inflow's ambitions really could set the gold standard for the way in which people with ADHD are perceived, supported and treated. Jermaine spent his entire life questioning his decisions and wondering why he continued to damage his career and his relationships. Getting a diagnosis changed that and it's clearly had a profound impact on his life. But the biggest benefit people get from a diagnosis is understanding themselves. Inflow's idea to bring that part of the process to people when they need it most is genuinely brilliant. If they're successful, they won't just help these individuals to thrive, they'll address misconceptions across the whole of society, and that's when things will really start to change.